Yeah, what's up for a nightcap? Chill, you know, kick back. Welcome to the Nightcap. It's your girl, Carolina Sanchez, and spring has sprung, baby. The flowers are in bloom, the drinks are flowing, and we got to go to a garden party for the exclusive launch of Madame Zero's new rosé champagne. Ooh, and it was spectacular at Hotel Zaza, so you gotta check that out. We got Madame Zero's Blanc de Blanc in studio, but it's the release of the rosé, so we gotta go try it, don't we? Let's go. So now I'm here with Matthew Massey, you know him, the man behind Madame Zero, and you are launching the rosé, baby. I'm so excited, and everyone here has already got their drink. I haven't had mine, though, so tell me a little bit about what I'm going to be tasting. So we waited 42 months to release the Madame Rosé, so it's extended age three times longer than traditional rosé. Wow! The goal is to get away from the impacts of sugar through this extended aging, the beautiful quality fruit that we grow in this little village called Vertu. So ultimately, it's just a very, very delicious style. Um, you're going to get very, very beautiful notes of freshly picked wild strawberries, pomegranates, um, it's got a lot of raspberry. It doesn't have the dark cherry that you normally get in the bitter finish. It's just a very, very elegant style. Um, we do have a lot of a lot of fizz right now. Yeah. We're gonna let that fizz simmer down. Okay. But what you're gonna what's gonna be unveiled is the, the really fine, delicate, precise bubbles. Uh, they're very fine, uh, very much more so than a traditional champagne, and that's a result of that extended age. So 42 months. What is typical? So a tr traditional champagne rosé is 12 months. So this is essentially over three times longer than what yeah. you have with the traditional champagne. And the composition is probably the most unique thing. 90% Chardonnay, just 10% Pinot Noir. And ultimately a traditional champagne rosé is 100% dark fruit or Pinot Noir. So we don't have that bitter finish. Um, we don't, we're not gonna have the headaches you traditionally would get. And the impacts the next day are gonna be significantly less if you have that extra glass. Okay, you're talking, you're talking to me. All right, cheers. cheers. All righty, let's see. Mm. The aroma immediately, oh no, but the flavor. Oh, but that's, that's like a full, that is a full, oh, I love that. It's refreshing, but it coats the mouth very well. And yeah, like, I'm having a good time. I feel light. I don't, all the notes you were talking about, the strawberry, the pomegranate, come through, but very subtly. It's not too heavy, it's not no. too rich. The color is very nice and light. Almost like a still Provence rosé. Very, very elegant is what we went for with those beautiful fine bubbles. And so when, I, when anyone drinks a sparkling wine, do the bubbles really tell you something about the process of how it was made? Well, ultimately what they tell you with the champagne is the extended aging is what gives you very fine bubbles. Um, when you start getting upwards of 10 years, the bubbles get even slower. They get very slow and they're fine. Interesting. Um, at about 42 months, which is where we're at, to 48, and 60 months like our Blanc de Blanc, you start to get those fine bubbles, but they still have a, they're nice and vigorous. They have a lot of energy. But the longer you get, as in with our vintage that arrives later this year that's nine year age, the bubbles are very fine and they're actually, they're very progressive in a very a very much a slower manner, yeah. but they're still there. They still tingle, tingle your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a tingling happen, baby. There's a tingling happen and it's delicious. So cheers to you. Cheers. Much success Thank you. to the rosé. Listen, if you haven't tried Madame Zero, you're missing out. The Blanc de Blanc is spectacular, but the rosé, baby, you need that this summer, right? Absolutely. Cheers. And spring isn't spring without flowers, and we got to catch up with my girl Chelsea Monroe, who had some zero-proof cocktails to taste while we did a flower workshop. Oh, yeah, it, it wasn't as easy as it seems. Check it out. And here we are at Botanics, but before we get to the workshop, there's actually a bar here, because you got to mix and mingle, baby. And who better to do it with than Chelsea Monroe behind Mixed Without? And you know her, because she came on the show with the biggest spread of non-alcoholic choices. And now you have a beautiful spread here. So what's what you shaking up for the people? 
Yeah, so we've got Botanics tonight. It's on stems and in stems. We wanted to bring the community together that's looking for experiences and activations without alcohol, but still have some delicious cocktails in their hand. And beautiful, you mean. Beautiful and delicious. Yes. So, so what's here? So first up, we've got a Paloma-inspired zero-proof cocktail with Pintire Spirits. We have a hibiscus cocktail with a little bit of a moment here. Okay, hold up. Spritzing with some rose water. Yeah. Come on now. Come on. The details, baby. Details. And we have a lavender uh, lemon inspired cocktail, basically a French 75 topped with non alcoholic champagne from French Bloom. And then we have a spicy margarita made with Tennyson. And then at the end, we have Withco's Hey Girl, which is basically cucumber, fresh mint, and lime topped with some sparkling water. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's see. I mean, that, that lemon's perfect, but it's got that. How, how else would you describe botanical flavor? Right, it's botanical, it's a little sweet. It has that lavender syrup in there, and then we add butterfly pea flowers that bring that purple uh, color to the surface. You and Flower, Flower HTX have teamed up for, I guess, a lovely evening for people to get together and have a good time drinking. Yeah. It's not not drinking, folks, yes. just because it doesn't have alcohol in it doesn't mean it's not a good time. And also learning a new skill. Exactly, and everyone can drive home safely, which is most important. Mm -hmm. And we're both kicking off both of our brands tonight, Flower HTX opening up this beautiful studio and Mix Without opening up their Zero Proof um, cocktails. Well, clearly I am late to the party and I'm a butt myself, bud myself in, you get it? I'm here with Brittany from Flower HTX. Hi. So what is this workshop supposed so to give the So basically, we kind of wanted to teach a class that was super personable to the everyday person. So it's basically kind of like you can go to Trader Joe's or HEB or any grocery store, pick up a bundle of flowers and be able to arrange it like a florist at home. Like you literally just took me back to every time that I go to Trader Joe's and you see the beautiful array of flowers and I have no idea what the hell to do with them. Exactly. So we basically made it super user friendly, teaching you how to like care for your flowers, how to treat them, how to process them, and then how to make them last as long as possible at home for you to enjoy. What we're looking at here, we kind of started the foundation. We started with greenery and then the filler flowers and the foundational flowers. So kind of like our bigger headed florals that take up a lot of the space in the arrangement. Those are the ones that are yes. supposed to be on the bottom. Yes. Okay. Um, and we kind of like to create layers and do like groupings of colors and kind of matching them so that they're kind of the same. So if you can kind of see this arrangement here, I kind of did like the more neutral tones here and the more like berry tones here, and then there's an orange flower here. That looks so good. That did not stand straight. No, but that looks good. Thanks. It looks natural. <laughs> She's judging me, folks. Like, flowers are always beautiful, so you can't mess it up. I mean, I received a lot of help with that bouquet, but it looked really cute, didn't it? I think so. Well, coming up next, Veronica went to a cocktail showdown back at Hotel Zaza. You can't miss it, so stay right there. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been showing off all the spring flings we've attended as a team, but my girl Veronica has a very special edition of VCAN VCANT. Yep, she was a celebrity judge at a cocktail showdown, and I mean, she's pretty honest. You gotta check it out. That's right, Carolina. We're out here at Hotel Zaza in Memoria City for the cocktail showdown. It is the battle of the bartenders. And I am going to be a judge, y'all. Verona can, Verona can't, okay? These bartenders are vying for a special prize and I get to take part in it and you will too. So come along. And so being a Vietnamese bar, we did want to incorporate some traditional Vietnamese, hence the club and seasoning, which is actually utilized at all of our locations, as well as the lychee chi content. Nice. All right. It's a peculiar flavor, a peculiar taste, chartreuse, but it's it's super nice if you know how to use it in cocktails. Like in this, I think it was very well incorporated. It did not overpower any of the other flavors, kind of like enhance them. So they, they did a good job implementing it. All right. Uh, you're ready? You can. I'm go. ready. Today, you guys are going to have some really nice little spring cocktails. We have our tequila reposado, Don Julio reposado, as well as your base. Okay. It's a nice little peculiar character to it. At the same time, it's super versatile. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted to highlight that. There we go. 
Thank you so much, Yvonne. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Enjoy. Delicious. Uh, in this case, I think they, they did a, a great job with the olive oil. Uh, it really, you know, makes a difference in your palate. Mm. Mm. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, yes. Yeah. I go to this one fresqueria all the time. They do this pineapple, cucumber, and jalapeno um, agua fresca that I am in love with. And so I just kind of leaned into kind of a Pim's cup. You have okay. a lot of the things that I love. All right, thank you. So I can just tell you off the top, this is the best looking drink out of the two that we've tried. I can't stop drinking it. <laughs> That's a good thing. And I promised myself That's... only light sips, but I feel like I'm constantly <laughs> sipping. Judging time. You guys are closing out the show. Y'all are closing it out. So let me see what y'all can bring. So I'm Ooh. representing Wild as well as uh, Kettle One. We all know that Kettle One is Dutch. I wanted to represent them correctly. So they, they, they have a, they always eat this beautiful, delicious, refreshing uh, pastry called Tumpus. Uh, so my idea and vision was to make, recreate this beautiful pastry and put it in a glass, make it refreshing, spring forward. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. All right. Enjoy. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Mm, yes, have a milk mustache. <laughs> They incorporated something very unique, not only about like nature and things like that, but yeah. they have a relatable correlation behind the brand's Sorry, heritage. Mm -hmm. That is creativity. Mm -hmm. That is creativity. Like thinking about how can you incorporate, you know, the Dutch influence of, you know, mm -hmm. where one comes from. Right. So that's, that's they did their homework. Yes. That's what I say. Woo! Well, y'all got to tell me which one was your favorite drink. Oh, I love toys. Winnie's because it was spicy. Oh, no. so you telling me you're a spicy winner? I'm a spicy girl. And what about you, Sarah? What was your favorite? Mine was the opposite. So oh. Wild was number one, and I like Winnie's because I like the spice. But I'm more sweet over spice. Roots and wings, and it tastes amazing. All right, so which one was your favorite? I'm going to have to go to Roots and Wings Roots as well. Roots and Wings as well. Yeah. It's the Roots and Wings. It's the Roots and Wings. It's the Roots and Wings. And if they had some wings to go with it, it would have been yeah. a yeah. Some wings, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's time to give awards. Just have to say that uh, amazing cocktails. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. This is the best cocktail, okay? The winner of the best cocktail, all the judges were anonymous by naming Wild. Roberto Ramos, cocktail one, King of Pus, and cocktail for Kings, everybody. Yeah. Congratulations! This duo has won the competition for the best drink for the cocktail showdown, baby. Y'all uh, showed out. How we feeling? Uh, excited, you know, and the amount of work that we put into it is like being paid off. So, but also it's like the little motivation to do stuff that's more wild. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy and super excited. Um, like you said, the amount of work we put in uh, and passion we put in this cocktail. Yeah, and it showed, like it it's, showed that you did. You know are, what I'm saying? And that's what we appreciate about. Yeah. The, the, where people can notice and appreciate the work that we do. Yeah. And how we approach like out of the box, you know? Well guys, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know y'all gonna have party hard tonight and for the rest of the weekend, right? Oh, yeah. oh you already know, it's bragging a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> All right. I got my guys there. Wow, congratulations to the winners. Woohoo! All right, guys, as you can see from the smile on my face, I had a grand old time here at Hotel Zaza at the Cocktail Showdown. But wait a minute, don't you go right there. We got more show for you. Welcome back to the Nightcap, and we've been talking all things spring in here. And one of those main things we enjoy in the springtime is rosé, baby. And Celebrate on Rosé was here for a second time in Houston, and they had a blast. And on stage, Big Frida, MC Light, and others that I know you love. So check out the team, hitting it up and talking to the people in pink. So what brought you out today? Wine. And also just to come and just to be outside, have a great time. There's going to be great artists today. and Big Frida, of course. I just wanted to catch a vibe and do something different. Usually I'm like working, mom, and I just want to just come to a scenery where it's just like fun, you know? The Celebrate on Rosé is French for celebrating pink. And what we like to do is bring people together in unique kind of niche ways 
Uh, we chose to do that around great rosé wines. Uh, we've asked our guests to, to dress in pink to be a theme for rosé. That's a great way to come out, have a good time, and kick off the summertime season. We've been creating niche events for a while around food and beverage uh, for a while now. And this was the next concept. We were watching the, the, the uh, evolution of rosé. People's uh, desire to be outside. Uh, following the COVID pandemic, people want to be outside even more. Uh, and so that kind of led to, to creating things like this. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Houston. I have a lot of family in Houston. And uh, we like to produce our concepts in some of the biggest cities in the country. So we were in Chicago last year. We'll be in DC later this year. We'll be in Atlanta later this year. And Houston is the third largest city in the country. So of course we're gonna bring it here and stay right here in the South. Uh, and Houston's kind of like a, a second home for me. All of the wines we're featuring uh, here this weekend are all black owned wines. Uh, that's an important part of our, our model. Uh, we have La, La Fête de Rosé, uh, a black owned French rosé. We have uh, Meg Brown Sisters and Black Girl Magic, uh, California rosé. Uh, and we have also have a, another black female owned wine, uh, Love Corkscrew. So last year we featured all black owned wines. We're doing the same thing this year. And through this festival, we will move tens of thousands of bottles of black owned wine, probably about 30,000 bottles of wine across the tour. It just was in my spirit. We did not know the colors. We did not have anything planned. We just was like pink. What is your favorite kind of wine? My favorite kind of wine is Cotta Frida, the big Frida Rose, honey. Uh -huh. You gotta taste that. Uh, you need to come to the nightcap and serve it up. Yes, we will awesome. definitely give you a nightcap. It will put you definitely to sleep under. So before, All the way under. <laughs> before you go to bed, what is your nightcap? Before I go to bed, I pray before I lay. All right. Yes. I love to see everybody in their pink baby wearing their best outfits and living life. Bam! Y'all should have been here today. Today has been one of the most amazing days in Houston. You look around, it's nothing but positivity, love, and music. And we're just happy to be here, man. Anytime we can all come together, it's no drama. It's just real relaxed, calm, and fun. It's a beautiful thing for the city. You missed out. You should be here. And I can't wait to come next year. People brought it out. like. Yeah. The party didn't end there, ladies and gentlemen, because we went to the official after party. But you got to stay right there to see what happens. Welcome back to the nightcap. What's a spring party without an after party? It ain't a party, baby. So after Celebrate on Rosé, everyone flocked over to Rock House for the official after party. And of course, the nightcap crew got to go. And we spoke with the owner and the creator of Celebrate on Rosé. Check it out. And we're here now at the after party of Celebrate on Rosé. It's at Rock House in Southwest Houston. You know, we were outside. It was a beautiful weather, picnic. Everybody was looking cute. But now we've grown in sexy, baby, at this party. So let's go check it out. These ladies looking fabulous. Hey. Were you guys outside earlier today? Oh, yes. yeah. Ma'am. It was awesome. It was amazing. Girl, that's how I'm still up. Why did y'all decide to go back out? Like, y'all were already outside. Oh, we came here for the food. Our food is amazing here. It was amazing. I can't wait till next year to do it all over again. We'll be back next year. I'll be right back. So people who missed it, let them know what they missed. Y'all missed it. What's it feel like here? Why'd you decide to come? A vibe, a vibe, yes, we are here. Come hey. next time, it's awesome. Great vibes, great food, celebration rosé, it's a movie. I'm from New York, so when MC Light came on and she was playing all the old school, she even went back to like the 60s. I was having a good old dance party. That's what's missing sometimes, a good old dance party. And now we're with the owner of Rock House, Rob Wright. Obviously, the official after party is here. Why did you want to have it here? Well, you know, the event in itself was a culmination of culture, music, food, fashion. And this is the whole premise of what Rock House is about. Food, culture, people coming together, having a good time. So what other place, better place to have that type of event in a 14,000 square foot venue? 
Yeah, and the music continues here. The food is delicious. We know that. <laughs> and the drinks are flowing. The vibe is right. So for people who didn't make it, they need to come back next year, right? Please. Yeah, yeah. Rock House is open seven days a week. We're open for dinner from 4 p.m. until brunch Saturday and Sunday. We have a great food, live music three days a week. And our celebrity uh, bookings are going to start. You're going to start hearing a bunch of household names that you guys grew up with listening to. They're going to start performing here. Yeah. Listen, if you missed it tonight, it's fine. You missed the, the event out and so celebrate on Rosé. But Rock House is here, baby. It's here to stay. And it's a vibe every freaking night. Right hey! Oh, the ladies look fabulous, didn't they? Now listen, if you have a party you want the Nightcap crew to attend, just slide into our DMs. Scan that QR code, won't you? And hey, we might surprise you and show up. And if you see the Nightcap crew out and about, hey, come up to us, talk to us. We don't bite, I promise. We're doing <laughs> Cheers to you. We'll see you next.